I'm out. Welcome to the Cecil Hurt Show. I am your host, Chris Ratty. Cecil comes in the studio with only a couple weeks left before practice starts. SEC Media Days is behind us. Gives us some advice on uh, approaching Coach Nick Saban for a five. All that and more on this week's Cecil Hurt Show. Welcome to the show, Cecil. How are you, Chris? I'm doing fine. Media Days. We did. Good. It was exciting. It was. You know, it's always fun to, to, to meet some different colleagues and... Of course, the news last year when we were able to break uh, about Fulmer was sort of the buzz. It, and you mentioned this, and we'll, we'll actually might as well get right into it, SEC Media Days last week. Almost like there was some, uh, not making up news, but making things out of nothing. And you do address this in the, um, the SEC witch hunt setting a bad precedent, specifically about Coach Spurrier and his mistake of leaving Tebow off, et cetera. You weren't too happy with the way that was pursued, well, so to speak. Yeah. It, it, first of all, the guy I felt bad for at the end of the day was Javon Sneed from Ole Miss, who's a, an excellent quarterback, and everybody's like, man, nobody could ever vote for him. You know, you got to vote for <laughs> Tebow. you got to vote for Tebow. Yeah. Um, and I understand, I think Tim Tebow, as I've said, is, is great, and I would certainly vote for him on any All-SEC team or All-America team that I'm voting on at this point um, in the preseason. But... You know, it, this is America, and you can't have a different opinion about it without sure. everybody, you know, it's certainly not the media, you know, trying to hunt you down and, you know, drag you into the... And it's supposed to be secret, daylight. right? It's I supposed mean, to be in secret. The, in the end of the day. It's supposed to be, you know, and it's, it's hey, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to necessarily go where, where Gene Chizik and Nick Saban went and, you know, start talking about... The, the Marines and all the, but the secret ballot is a secret ballot, and one reason you have there. it, one reason you have it is to have a diversity of opinion, um, and so I, I think that that's that that's fine, and and you know there's nothing wrong. I understand where Steve Spurrier was coming from, but there was you know, there's no law that said Tim Tebow had to be a unanimous choice or everything sure. is. Um, he's a great player. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad now that he is a unanimous choice, and to his credit, he didn't make a big deal. But Tim Tebow wasn't the one complaining that he, he wasn't, and and I understand. I understand what the mentality is. I know if Alabama had a, you know, if, if Greg McElroy wins the Heisman Trophy this year and takes Alabama to the national championship, mm -hmm. people will be sensitive about that kind of thing. But um, you know, I think that the world is, or the country is, is big enough that we can accommodate a coach not voting for Tim Tebow. And you know, it, it, the out of the Florida papers, they were as you said, making a bigger deal of it. Tebow Gate was what they were referring to it as. And perhaps they were looking and hoping that maybe it was someone else besides the way it went out. Lane oh, they Kiffin, were hoping it was instance. Lane Kiffin for sure. Absolutely. Probably their their list would have been, you know, Lane Kiffin number one, Nick Saban number two. Sure. Um, they, they, that's what they were pulling for when it was Spurrier and, and you know, the, I think it Former was Florida coach when he compares Tebow. A different his. dynamic to him. And if it had been Les Miles, you know, well, that's the <laughs> Exactly. Who knows? So. And uh, and of course the the and and then again that that day of of the whole Tim Tebow and, and saving himself from marriage situation. Silly. Yeah. You know. I, mean, hey, I I think the media has the right to ask anything, any question, but you're there doing a job, so ask a question that's relevant to your job. If you need to know that for an article you're writing, if you're writing for the Christian Science Monitor, and that's a, a sure. urgent issue. Then fine. If you're asking it so everybody will say, "Oh yeah, there's the guy there," you know, then you're. If you took a bet by the the round table, because that's that's what I heard that that was a bet that originated on the round table. I, I don't know the guy's background very well. You know, I'm, I'm familiar enough with mm -hmm. with some of it, uh, and I think it's disingenuous on his part to say it wasn't a, an attention grabber. Yeah, um, absolutely. So. You saw it but live. He was credentialed media. Sure. We do have a right. To and we did have it streamed live on TideSports.com. We did. I, I would accomplished, have, mission accomplished. I, I, I will. I will put it this way. I would have more respect for him if you'd asked every player, <laughs> you know, the same question. Absolutely. So let's move on here, Cecil. We want to touch quickly on uh, UA formally submitting its appeal mm -hmm. in the textbook case before moving on to questions from our audience. Um, and you did write a column today that the university presents a good argument. They do. They do. Now, whether that means it'll be a successful argument uh, remains to be seen. It's, uh, I think there's a lot of 
backstory, as there always is in an NCA situation. I think that, that the Committee on Infractions is trying to, to calibrate, to use President Obama's word, their response to some of these cases. And, and um, the way appeals are written now, you, you have to prove that they abused their discretion. That's a pretty high standard, and it also forces you to write a pretty forceful appeal. You can't just say, you know, we, we think this and they thought that and reasonable people can disagree. You have to say, no, they're, they're totally wrong. This is insane. No normal person could think this. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know that that's really a healthy process, but it is the process that we've got. Um, it would it'll be interesting to, to follow the Florida State Bobby Bowden case. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be interesting to follow some of the some of the sunshine law pursuits and, and what the media, what we and, and other media will be able to to get in terms of NCIA documents. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's a complicated situation. AP in Florida is suing on, over some of the Florida State yep. documents, and, and I would, I, I'm not going to speak for management, but I wouldn't be surprised if AP and, and the Tuscaloosa News and um, Birmingham News all were, were involved in some sort of a Attempt we do have some of our Florida access. papers that are Absolutely. that are involved that in are that. Parties, yeah. Yep. Um, what is your? You did touch on the, in, the, in that column um, about the penalty of vacating games. What is your thought in that penalty? I mean, is that really something that is that holds any sort of water, or that you can I, I look think back it on and can you know? I think if it's if it's enforced, and, and again, I think the more history and the more tradition your program has, whether you're talking about the individual history of a Bobby Bowden or you're talking about, you know, mm -hmm. for instance, for Alabama, it would include a bowl win right, in the Cotton Bowl against Texas Tech. Mm -hmm. And Alabama and Southern Cal are neck and neck fighting for the most bowl wins in history. And so sure. Alabama would hate to have to vacate a bowl win and, and drop back into a tie with Southern Cal for that instead of saying, you know, there, there's something to be said for saying, oh, it's the sure. winning is both. Is, is it any, I, I guess at the end of the day, is it any skin off anybody's nose? Maybe not, but Alabama fans are proud of that kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Let's let's get into some gridiron. See sure. mm -hmm. Leave some of this, this technical stuff aside here. Mm -hmm. People are chomping at the bit. They can feel it. It's almost time. Practice uh, August 5th is the kickoff. Fan day is August 9th. So those are right around the corner. Bam Birmingham, the original prediction, Birmingham is, is the member, the original prediction was that three years at Alabama and Nick Saban would have this team clicking. Now people are saying that Alabama can't live up to their success last year. With this being the third year under Nick Saban, do you think the expectations would be different for this coming year if they had gone, say, 9-3 and three in the regular season instead of 12-0? and 0? It's hard to say because... Um because they did go 12 and 0, and sure. you're, you're, you're talking about psychological. So much of that depends on who you beat them, when you beat them. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of the Ole Miss um, buzz is because they they won at the end of the year. They won their bowl game. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Alabama is a very strong defensive team. They've got some questions to answer offensively. You know, offensive line is is the first and and. Mm -hmm partly related to that and also independent in some ways is quarterback play. If they can beat Virginia Tech, which you know, it would be a competitive game, I think Alabama will be favored by a field goal or so. Mm -hmm. uh, then they've got a couple of games in Tuscaloosa where they can can sort of get on track for conference play and, and who knows where they could go. Um, you know, is, it, is it impossible for them to, to run the table in the regular season again? No. Sure. You know, they, they've got a, a very good chance of doing that. But um, they'll have to answer those questions. Bama Byer, and, and now that you mentioned O line, Bama Byer wants to talk about that and talk about the replacements and uh, and what our they say our realistic expectations should be. So on behalf of the fan. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I think I, you get asked that all the time. What should yeah. hey fans should expect to win? If you're a fan, you should expect to win. Mm -hmm. So so expect a way. You know, there expect you to be. 12 and 0. What's a what's a realistic assessment of the offensive line? They're going to have to either have a, a junior college player, a carpenter, or a freshman, maybe Fluker or Steen or somebody really step in and play and be yeah. good. You know, Mike Johnson's good. He's an all-conference performer, but but you know you can't build a line just on one or two experienced guys unless you get a lot of help, and that's what they're going to have to have. Not all of them, from, not all of it from freshmen or JC transfers, but you know guys like hadn't played a whole lot. They played some, but guys like William Blahos and, and John Michael Boswell from Northport. Those are guys who might have to play some. Mm -hmm. Teague asks if healthy, 
Where do you think Roy Upchurch will fit into the rotation this year? Will he be in the top two in terms of carries? Yeah, I think if you assume that he's 100% healthy, and that's without having complete foreknowledge of how Trent Richardson will make the adjustment. Out. He but is mammoth. He's a big, he's a big young man. He yeah. sure is. Um, so he's going to be in there. Uh, Mark Ingram's going to be in there. Terry Grant, you hope, will, will find a, a role. We'll see what, you know, when Eddie Lacy gets his final word from the clearinghouse, he may, he's a player that may have a role. So mm -hmm. you know, it's hard to say, oh, yeah, but, but Roy Upchurch had a role before he was injured, and, and I think if, that he uh, impressed the coaches with his play. Covert Op 77, who would win, Alabama's defense or Chuck Norris? <laughs> the Chuck Norris thing, we got to find somebody new because Chuck yeah, Norris has been, he's been through the ringer. I he love asking, I mean, that's a legitimate question. Sure. Um, sure. But is it, is it Firewalker, Texas Ranger, or is it Invasion USA, Chuck Norris? Because there's different I, I guess, levels, mustache yeah. levels, too, and that's something to consider. Yeah, and, and I guess every generation kind of has their own, you know, individual who's who's personifies that mm -hmm. um so but these things get on the internet and you know it's bill brasky for a while too i never understood where the bill brasky <laughs> was yeah. coming from bill brasky counted to infinity twice you know those kind of things yeah, those kind of things so um it's good for a chuckle i, I don't know um alabama will have a good defense i Hey, Chuck Norris is not what they got to worry about. Even even what Tim Tebow is what they've got to worry about. That's that's a good point. Capstone crazy. Who wins a chess match? Charles from Real Town or Lane Kiffin? <laughs> <laughs> a couple good ones back to back for you. <laughs> um, that's a that's a tough that's a tough call. Um, I would I would guess. Lane Kiffin would probably ask his dad to come help him win t the chess match, um, at, at which point Charles would get upset and forfeit. So I'll go with Game Lane. over. There so by go. default. There you go. That's funny. Food for golf number 99. Are you allowed to attend any of the informal workouts by incoming and returning players? If so, how many have you attended, and who has impressed or disappointed you? Um, the media is not supposed to, to have access to those um, or, or is not granted access. I mean, allowed is a funny, you know, who's, who's saying we're not allowed? The university's saying that they're, that they're closed. And so, you know, they, they have um, the ability to do that. It's not like an NCAA rule. I can break all NCAA rules sure. like that that you want to. We're not bound by that. The university is. And you can put the university in a bind sometimes. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's just like the, we've, we've talked before about the when recruits are visiting campus, can you go up and talk to them? Well, yeah, I can go up and talk to whoever I want to. Now, the university can't facilitate that, and they might try and, and inhibit that and, and tell you to keep away. But, mm -hmm. you know, I'm certainly not in any trouble if I do. Um, but the workouts are closed. They're, they're pretty secure because the coaches ha can't go either, you know, or, or are not supposed to go. So, so um, it, it's just not something that they like to have evaluated, and so um, I hadn't seen any this year. So a young Cecil Hurt was never peeking through the fence? Oh, sure, yeah, no absolutely, yeah? absolutely, but <laughs> times are different, and, and they really, when I was young, they didn't have much of that. I mean, you had a little bit, they'd go out there and throw, and, Yeah. You know, but you could kind of walk out there and see it. Bleeding Crimson, Cecil, glad to have you back on the air, so to speak. Nobody knows what to call this, you know what I mean, is it TV? <laughs> no! It's not radio. What is it? Internet. Ooh. My question pertains to the much publicized topic of attrition. Mm -hmm. How do the early departures from the team via transfer primarily affect our APR rating? Forum posters have chimed in with their thoughts, but I'd like a definitive answer from a source more in the know, if you will, please. Well, the, you know, the way the APR is structured now, if a player leaves in good standing and goes ahead and completes his degree at another institution, it doesn't count against you. In the original formulation, it did. So. That's, that's why all coaching staffs, and it's not just restricted to Alabama, they encourage a, a player to, to you know, transfer to another school where he can play and where he can be eligible and where he'll finish his degree. Mm -hmm. you know, what you don't want is somebody transferring and then dropping out because that hurts your APR and their APR. Um, but it, it's, you can lose, you lose points for a transfer. You don't get four points out of four and they're 
system, but you can still get three points out of four. If you have a huge number um, who, who transfer out and then don't go on and graduate, it can hurt you. And of course, when they transfer out, you can't really monitor their academic progress. But if you're graduating, the, you know, the rest of your players and the, the big percentage of your 85 who are on scholarship are graduating, then you're going to be okay APR-wise. Okay, I got, a, I got a hoops question, Steve. Did Anthony Grant attend that controversial basketball banquet in Las Vegas last week, which was the Grassroots Basketball of America dinner in honor of former shoe executive Sonny Vaccaro? An NCAA Needler and basketball marketing guru considered the godfather of amateur hoops. I'll have to find that out. He was in Las Vegas. He was? Yeah, um, because the AAU tournament out there, almost, okay. almost all the coaches were. Whether he went to the Sonny Vaccaro banquet, I hadn't asked him, but I will. We'll get back to you on that. I like it. Bama Chris, <laughs> non-football topic. Exactly how tall are you? I've seen you standing next to Ratty, and you tower over him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is that an attest to how tall you are? I don't know. I, I, guess, I guess first we have to establish what the <laughs> baseline is. I'm 6'3". You're 6'3"? Yeah. I'm 5'9", when the breeze is blowing right. But you don't stand in a box like Tom Cruise does no, in his movies. No, 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 no. Like, that's legitimate when Cecil's no, standing next to me. No, it's not a Pacino no, we move. To, we used to make Anna Maria stand on a box. <laughs> just so she could... That's it. So it wouldn't look freakish. Too awkward. You know, it wouldn't like... <laughs> Wouldn't look like Aaron Andrews. Got a sitting on yeah. Yao Ming. Yeah. yeah, have a sitting on three telephone books. <laughs> All right, before I let you go, I want to discuss with you. I don't know if you noticed these, but I'm wearing glasses for the first time in the show. I did notice. I'm trying to get a little more serious. Did notice. Didn't know if those were just readers serious. or if they were. No, they're legit. I'm blind as a bat. Turns out mm -hmm. uh, I've been wearing contacts for a long time. The glasses. I want a little more of a serious tone here because last week at SEC Media Days. Mm -hmm. And as of course you know, our Bring Back the Five mission on Tide right. Sports, it's been, one, it's been for a long time. And we went after Coach Saban last week. And Sean's going to cut the tape while we talk about this. Uh, one of our forum members showed up to, to help us to ask Saban, give me five. Mm -hmm. And as Saban was coming down Radio Row, he decided, opted for the elevator instead of the escalator walking by the fans. He made a move, and you can see him make the move. He sort of dips mm -hmm. and then goes the elevator route. Now... Our four member had bacon, and I don't know if the bacon smell generally that will spur someone on to come your way, uh, but I don't know if it was that. If you knew the five was coming, do you think Nick Saban might be afraid of the five? I doubt it. Might be you, afraid of might be afraid of bacon. Be afraid yeah. of, more so of bacon than because I'm really curious if that's part of the ritual or if that is it kind of also of, in an independent. <laughs> <laughs> sort of thing. He yeah, had some it, bacon on him. Yeah, it came out of left field. Bama yeah. Todd, who showed up, who was brilliant enough to help us out, is the king of bacon oh. uh, and known as in the form. So he had some with him. And perhaps that was a, a bad move on his part. We maybe wouldn't think that out thoroughly. I don't know. But now it's turned into a season long attempt to get the five know. from Coach Saban. I don't know if Coach Saban's trying to keep kosher or, or where we are. On <laughs> That's that. true. So we should take any sort of meat out of the equation. Yes. Yeah, and just go for straight skin on Absolutely. skin five. Absolutely. Now, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to ask you to help us out with this. I want you to maintain your integrity and not ask Nick Saban for the five. Well, that'd be kind of cheapening it anyway. Wouldn't, wouldn't I mean, it? I mean, you know, it, it's kind of getting it on your own. That's, yeah, you're right. That's the under but if, if there's anything you can do, say you're in a private conversation with Coach Saban, and you're like, listen, I don't want to call us idiots, goons, the funny guys from Tidesports.com. <laughs> they're on a mission. So if some guy in glasses, because he wants to be taken seriously, yeah. Okay. This is out the five. Yeah. I'm just saying, you know, if you could help us out. If not, no big deal. I'm just saying. With that said, Cecil, we're off next week. But we're going to maybe try to get a guest. I don't know. We'll talk about that first. Yeah, we will. But uh, either way, thanks for joining us. Practice in a couple weeks and then uh, full on. Sounds good. All right, thanks, man.